Hello and welcome to the Monday, December 5th, 2022 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from San Francisco, California. In Diaries this weekend, Friday, we had Brad talk about the latest update to the QBot or QuackBot uh, malware. What makes them so dangerous is the fact that once they infect a victim, the malware injects emails into existing email threads. Malicious emails will then be sent as replies to emails the victim received, making it more likely, of course, that the receiver will think, hey, uh, this email, this attachment is actually valid and something that I need uh, to uh, check out. What makes the latest uh, version of this different uh, than prior ones is that uh, the attacker is now using VHD files. VHD files are similar uh, to ISO files, basically disk images. One disadvantage to the attacker of VHD files is that they require administrative privileges to mount and open. Uh, other than that, uh, the attack is similar to what we have seen sort of with these ISO files in the past. Now, the administrative requirement, that only applies if you're actually in active directory environment. And malware like QBot often targets sort of home users, small businesses that, of course, are less likely to be part of an active uh, directory. Or if they do so, well, um, the user now needs administrative privileges. And of course, again, in many of these sort of less maintained environments, you do have uh, everybody sort of running uh, with administrative privileges still. More details and the respective files are again available uh, as links from the diary on Friday again. And then over the weekend, uh, Guy and Didier wrote two related diaries uh, with uh, binaries that are installed in Windows, but they're typically more associated with Unix. And of course, uh, with uh, things like SH and uh, such now being becoming part of Windows, you'll find them now more easily. And of course, uh, malware or attackers can take advantage of them. Also, good old curl is now found in uh, Windows. DDA sort of makes the point that there are also some of the more obscure Unix utilities that still uh, make uh, great covert channels, uh, like, uh, for example, uh, the finger utility that he points out. I um, don't know when the last time was that I used it. It was probably in the 80s, maybe 90s, that I used the finger utility sort of somewhat legitimately. Uh, it's, it's a command in Unix that you used to be able to use uh, to check who is logged in on a remote system uses port 79 of course can be used sort of for all kinds of little uh, text uh, data transfers and researchers from a data cloud cybersecurity team released details on a proof of concept for a vulnerability they discovered in CrowdStrike's Falcon endpoint detection and response tool the vulnerability would allow an attacker to disable the sensor on the endpoint. Usually disabling the sensor requires a one-time uh, token, but the vulnerability allowed, well, uh, everybody uh, to do that uh, by basically bypassing that one-time uh, token uh, process. CrowdStrike already released a patch for this vulnerability, but of course it's definitely something to look out for given that an attacker, particularly more sophisticated attackers, uh, tend uh, to try to disable uh, these kind of systems. Let me go to bit more details regarding the leaked, stolen, whatever uh, Android platform certificates uh, that I mentioned on Friday. Some of the affected vendors have now been identified and include Samsung, LG, Xiaomi, uh, MediaTek, and AnyDesk. Uh, just to clarify, uh, these are distinct vendors and distinct certificates that were leaked. Uh, this happened over uh, many years. It's not something that just uh, recently apparently happened. It was just now sort of uh, discovered and uh, made public. It is very odd that this appears to be uh, such a systemic issue affecting uh, so many different uh, vendors. 
You can find some of the malware signed uh, with these certificates via virus total. And some of these samples appear to be, well, again, you know, several years old. So that you know, makes me believe that uh, this happened a long, long time ago. I have not seen any statements yet from any of the affected vendors if they know what exactly happened here. Android does not use a specific sort of sort of authority. So these are individual certificates. They're sort of trusted on first use. And there's nothing that can sort of really be uh, revoked uh, easily. Uh, what happens now is that any uh, software in the Google Play Store that's signed by these certificates is automatically uh, removed. But uh, these certificates, well, they will stick around for a while. The Samsung one, for example, is valid till 2038. Part of the issue here is there appears to be no great sort of way uh, to update uh, these certificates. If you update the software, it has to be signed uh, with the same certificate. If a new certificate is used, you first have to uninstall the old version and then install uh, the uh, new version. So that makes that uh, process uh, even more uh, sort of uh, finicky here. So best thing you can do is, well, don't just trust software because it appears to be signed. And like I said, the uh, Google Play Store uh, kind of uh, protects you here from uh, these specific certificates. And security company Legit Security wrote up a blog post outlining an interesting issue that may lead to vulnerabilities in projects using GitHub Actions. This has been a feature that uh, has had some issues in the past. Uh, this is a, a new thing. GitHub Actions are scripts that are executed whenever a user submits a pull request. So you can run some security tests. You can basically build the project, see if there are any errors uh, when it's being built. Uh, this is meant sort of to triage essentially pull requests before uh, they are subject to any uh, manual investigation. But um, what legit security here found is they demonstrated it with the Rust open source project that these GitHub Actions, well, uh, they have the ability to download uh, artifacts, as it's called. Uh, they're part of the um, same project, but they're not necessarily part of the same branch or uh, some kind of main branch. Instead, and that's what happened with Rust, an attacker uh, could essentially submit a pull request with a malicious library, and uh, then uh, that malicious library will be used as part of the GitHub action instead of uh, the uh, latest uh, legit uh, library here. So that's how uh, arbitrary code can be, can be executed as part of that GitHub action. These GitHub actions, uh, depending on how they are configured, uh, have access to credentials and uh, they can't even like you know, approve pull requests and such. So an attacker essentially uh, could use this vulnerability to take over a particular repository. This is not a vulnerability in a GitHub. It's really just a feature that may not be well understood often. And a GitHub actually in response to this clarified their instructions somewhat. But the actual vulnerability here is how you're writing these actions. If uh, you're downloading artifacts, that you make sure that you download them from a specific branch that uh, you trust and that you're not sort of executing here, uh, just a random user provided code. Well, and this is it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.